Alright, um, new tutorial, Java tutorial. Alright, in this tutorial we're going to be talking about catching exceptions with a code. Um, I showed an example of this when we were handling the argument that was passed through the main method um, on the first tutorial. It threw out a null um, pointer uh, exception for the array out of bounds. Uh, was out of bounds. Um, so we're going to be talking about exceptions. We're going to be talking about constructors for a class uh, for that class. Uh, we're going to be. I'm going to talk about booleans a little bit more. Operators of booleans because I missed out on the previous tutorial, tutorial three, I think it was. Um, and also um, other classes having multiple classes and extending content from other classes. Um, and also going to be talking about making comments and on inside your classes without the code being so we can sort of make comments inside the inside our classes without it, um, coming up on the compiler as errors and stuff right so go open up our Java project and go straight into our S main class right so first thing I want to talk about is comments very very simple forward slash asterisk another asterisk and another forward slash there's your block comment. These can go on multiple lines. Note how all the text comes up in green. This is because I'm using Notepad++. If you don't have it, you can download it from Google. Uh, well, not from Google. You can Google it, Notepad++ download, and then it's on their official site. Really easy to download. I think it's open source, and you can also have scripts on it. Um, yeah, so that's, that's a block comment. And if you want comments for single lines, forward slash slash. And then you can type your comments here. But if I go to the next line, it only applies for that single line. So block comment, block comments, which is forward slash asterisk asterisk forward slash the block comments. These can go on multiple lines and just forward slash slash for single line comments. Nice and simple. Right, boolean operators. There's a few bits I missed out, so we can have if define a boolean. Right, so we say if b. That means true. That also means true. And and that also means true. So if it so if B, so that means if B is true, if B equals true, and if B does uh, does not equal false. So if it doesn't equal false, the only op opposite thing it can be is true. It's like on on uh, on 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 off. It can only equal true or false with a boolean. So they all mean true, and these all mean false. Does not equal b. Um, so that means doesn't equal true. Not it doesn't equal b. It just means doesn't equal true. Um, b does not equal true, and hmm, yeah, and equals false. So you've got true, true, true and false false and false I just stick with this one and this one very simple All right, they're, they're the two things I wanted to cover just before I started doing all this not because they're required just not required in this tutorial but they're just things I forgot about at the time and they're quite important because I use those a lot um, the comments and the operators for the booleans um, yeah, exceptions. Right, so we're going to try and catch again, like we did in the first tutorial, um, an argument off of this string array here, which has been passed through the main method. Right, so let's just say args zero. We'll print that out. Sorry for the way I just typed this out, but what would that be? That would be a Doing, so I don't need to pass that. Right, so there's our exception. Right, so for things like that, you'd want to use the try operator, and then you need to catch, like you did with the do while sort of setup going on there. But it's a little bit different, but it's a similar, similar but a little bit different. Right, we use two more um, curly braces. And there we go, right, we type out exception. Probably just spelled that wrong. Exception. E. 
so we've got exception which is sort of like our could say data type like in i so that's how it's all set up and then we can say oh, what was it hmm. print stack trace something like that one sec right oops right. and yes I did type it wrong uh, there we go and it prints it out. Right, we can also, rather than using print stack trace, we can also use system.out.print. So system.out.print line new. And then we can say error e. And it says error Java language array index out of bounds exception zero. So that means the double really talking about means that means the argument set for zero is nulled. There is no argument for zero, and we're trying to use it, and it's throwing us an exception. Right, the other way is throws, and then we can say exception, and we can do it like that, and that means we can remove all this try catch compile. And we get it that way. And there's one more way, which is throw new runtime exception e. Whoops, spell that wrong. In uppercase R. Build run. Go. So there are certain ways you can catch, throw, and try to attempt to do code, but it's still going to crash your um, your script, but at least that way you'll be able to catch the exceptions to be able to handle them, and we do that just by saying, right, so what we've got here, we've got the um, argument, and we're trying to check for the value zero, so we need to say if the argument's length, because it's an array, is more than the value we're using here, zero. So if it's more than that, then print, oh, then print that value out. And it's not, and then we can do like what we did previously. Add an argument, hi. Whoops, didn't need to compile because I've already, because um, I hadn't changed any source code, and we get the output hi. So that's just your basic try, catch, throw, new, and throws handling.